This conference will now be recorded. So I want to record a quick video to remind you how we set up our PLCs in our lab. Since everything has a dedicated IP address, um, I've given you a blank configuration in our uh, Canvas course. So let me open a new window and I'll show you where this is. As we start programming, show you where this is in our course. And I got two courses, but it's in the same spot. So let me click on the one and it'll be just student view. So, you know, so I'm not showing off any uh, student information. So here's a student view and you can see some of the videos, but if I go into modules and course resources, there will be a first configuration setup right here that you can download. And that will just have all the hardware every time. No, t and it's completely free or not untouched okay so you can download that and open that every time if you want or save that so you have a, a starting point um so we close that down and i have a, a class i have one that's open but you, one of the things you need to make sure is over on the side here that io configuration is there we'll go through in class how to add io but you got to make sure that your input output digital IO is there for on, on the local side, or which is on the, the compact bus, as well as your two input output cards for the point, the point IO, or I, or I like to call it the AENT, which is the distributed IO. Um, as you, when you download a file for the first time, the first thing you should do is go up to your communication path and find it right up here in yellow. I'm gonna just highlight it really big. And so that you don't know, uh, I'm going to draw a big circle around it. And click on the little, the who's active, which is who RS links. And as it, if I, when you click on it, this window opens up. All right. You find your processor. And if it is, as I said in class, if you highlight something that isn't able to communicate with, everything will go dark. So click on your processor. In my case, it's the 10 136 If you don't remember, look on your processor, and it's that should it be clearly labeled right here on the processor. Um, you can then set and then you can set the project path. And if you did it right, you should see it show up right here. Okay. You can go ahead and close this. And the other thing you will have to do is go to IO configuration, you know, if, and this may be hidden. So you might, some of your, in some cases, you might have things kind of like this. It may be hidden, so you may need to scroll. Um, so go down to under IO configuration. It may be hidden, so hit the plus sign. And under Ethernet, because how is it communicated with, how is it connected to the processor? And then right click on the highest level of, and go to properties. And assign the IP address. Now it may this may be highlighted right here. This may be highlighted right here, and it could be a two in here. Don't worry about it. Just click on IP address and type in 10 136.95 and whatever this IP address is, add one to it. So 253 in this case since my processor IP address is 252. Because in, in the path, we identify the processor IP address. In here, we identify the distributed IO IP address so that we can communicate with it properly. So again, I said in class, sometimes it, you may see something like this. So either scroll down or what I do is just make it bigger and hit apply and okay. Let me down, and then I go to download this project. And so I hit download. And then this is actually, you want to change it to the controller mode back to remote run, hit yes. Um, remember in class, I talked about this area up here. 
So let me highlight it right here. So in the upper right hand corner, this is your status bar uh, for your PLC. It might have another name, but but um, I want you to point out if you don't see green right here, then you won't see outputs turn on. Um, what a lot of times will happen is when you first start your program, your start things, it'll be in remote program mode as evidenced by the blue, okay? Now, also take note of, of this right here, this box right here. This is what the switch says on the processor. So if I, if I move this to program mode, notice now two things. One, this switch is pointing to program, and you'll see this is just program. Out, outputs won't turn on if it's in program mode. So you need, either, you need to go physically put the switch on the processor. Either change it into remote or run. If I do it in run, it's gonna say run. It's gonna point here, but I won't be able to make any changes. So for our sake, I always put it in remote, and so I can easily toggle between the two, program and run mode, okay? This is where I also go to download. And remember, download takes the program from the, the, the software and put it into the processor. Upload takes it from the processor and put it into the controller, or put it into my programming software, okay? So if this is saying IO not responding, it's probably because you didn't put your IP address in right, um, so you got to go offline in order to make any hardware changes. Okay, I'll show you what that looks like really fast so that you know. So let me go offline. Actually, there's an easy way of doing that. I'll just unplug it. So let me go. I can go back online. So as long as I'm making no changes, I can go right online with the controller. And so now watch. I'm going to just disconnect this here. And you can see IO not responding. And you can see little triangles right here. And you can, and sometimes you can see what the code is, connection time dial, IO faulted, you know, kind of down here below. So if I click back, if I plug my things back in, it should work and everything's hunky-dory. And then you can see all the triangles go away and everything is okay. Okay. Since I'm here, if I click on this little icon here, I can go di dive deeper into my processor. I can see the revision. I can clear faults. So if you get a fault, you click. You can go online, click here, and you can clear faults. You can change the date and time. Now look, is this the date and time? No. So I set date and time from my workstation. Now it matches my workstation. Okay. I can even adjust for say like savings time. Advanced. Some of this stuff is extra stuff. Here's the project name. I can see how much memory I'm using, you know, what my capacity is for more. I can see what my ports that I'm using are. I can look at my network and all the other fun stuff. But really, I would go in here to general and, you know, tweak things. Now, in industry, if I wanted to change the revision type and do this to something else, I would click on change controller, and this is where I can change things. Okay? But keep the program the same. Okay, any other questions, see me in class, but we'll, you know, we'll dive deeper, but over here is where we do everything. Um, we'll, we'll talk about controller tags. We'll talk about the, the program that I'm utilizing is always under main program and the main routine. And now I'm using some subroutines but here, but don't worry about it. And, but in this class, we're gonna just kind of focus what's going on in these two areas here and IO configuration. Everything else is at PLC2, PLC3, okay? Um, let me see, anything anything other tours of the software? Again, you can save here, uh, always save as. Okay, one other quick thing. Say, for instance, you come in and things are missing and you don't see anything, so everything is missing. Well, there's a little button up here you can toggle. to turn this back out. Um, right here is where all this is, but if this is missing, let me see if I can say if this is missing, I can't, I don't see this. 
and you go in and things are messed up. You can always go into view, go into toolbars, and reset to factory toolbar layout, and everything resets back to normal. Um, so this is how you would make things go back to what you're used to. Let me do that again. Hit OK. Well, view, toolbars, restore factory layout, and hit OK. Now I can resize this too if I want to make it bigger. I can resize some stuff too, but fine pretty okay. But yeah, that's how we would do things. Now that's all right. Play around. Um, when in doubt, views. Here's all your view things, and you can kind of start pulling things up. Your errors. If you want to see what your errors are, click here. If you want to see, you know, look for a watch table. That that's we'll talk about that. That's here and the like. Cool. And you can click this and hide this. Thank you.